just in case you didn't see episode one of Down to Earth with Zac Efron, let me just give you a little quick recap just to catch you up. <clears throat> <clears throat> wow. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Awesome. Wow. That's amazing. <sighs> okay, I'll start off with the positives of the show. It was beautifully shot. It was wonderful. It was so beautiful. I had no idea I sound look like that. Two, um, I had no idea that it was that energy self-sufficient. Like, I had no idea about Iceland's renewable energy systems. The food areas, like learning about, um, like the local food producers was very cool. Let's get into why it was terrible now. It starts out and it introduces itself and it's like, hi, I'm Zac Efron and I, man, 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 something, 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 I'm into nature or something like that. And then it goes on to introduce Darren Olean, the co-host of the show, and it says something like, oh, he's the guru of wellness or something. Um, first of all, Darren, I need a background check on you. Check your website. He is a self-proclaimed superfood expert, superfood discoverer or something to that effect on his, that's what it says on his website. Um, and his most recent discovery is discovering some nut in Brazil that indigenous communities have used for centuries. Um, that is, I am not even making that, that was, that's directly on his website. So are you a guru or do you just fly around the world, go to indigenous communities, take what they've been doing for centuries, capitalize on it and sell it to a North American audience? Are you a guru or what are you, Darren? What are you? First issue. Second issue with him is that he's the co-creator of Shakeology, which is um, some super super food smoothie used um, with the Beach Body program. And the Beach Body program is an MLM style format. He capitalizes off of a MLM scheme. So um, I'm not. I'm honestly not surprised that they didn't talk about how capitalism and climate change are so linked and how like the importance of the link. That is my first issue with the host. Um, I don't really have any issue with Zac Efron. I honestly don't really know him. Um, besides his like deliverance was a little deadpan. He didn't really like show any like enthusiasm or passion for sustainability, nature, food, anything. Uh, besides the point in the show where he said 45 megawatts. Um, that was literally the only time I saw him have any expression in the entire show. Yeah, my other issue with this host, um, they just don't it just, there's like such a disconnect. They're both wearing like the entire show, Zac Efron wears plaid and beanies. And you can tell it's a very nice beanie. You can tell when a beanie looks expensive, okay? You can tell when a toque is very nice, all right? Um, he wears skinny jeans, what looks like very expensive boots, a very expensive jacket. And then, you know, he has this like very expensive, this giant watch while he's making chocolate and the camera's right on it. It just like doesn't, I'm like confused as to why you chose that outfit when you're going to local communities. It just seems like there's a disc, there's a celebrity disconnect, Zach. We just need to bridge that a little bit. There's also a point where they were eating at the um, restaurant that has the reindeer and he said something like the, um, the chef was like, oh, what do you think it tastes like? And Zach said, oh, it tastes like wag something. I had it in Japan. And the producer, like the chef was like, wagyu beef, like the most expensive beef in the entire world. He's like, oh yeah, that. And it's like, you couldn't have think of anything else. You couldn't have said deer, something that's like a little more relatable to us common folk. Like, just like, other than that, the point that they're just like two dude bros from California who like say weird things like, bro, this is mother earth. Bro, do you feel that? Just like stuff like that, where it's like, what is going on here? They like, don't, like, yeah, there's no passion. There's like no interest. They deliver things in such a deadpan way. There's one point when they were going to like see where the, two, the continental divide was, which was so interesting. That's like so cool. Like you're going to a plate where the tecton, you're going to a place where the tectonic plates are shifting apart. And all you can say is I'm on another continent. This is cool. Okay, so there's a point where they were going to the waterfalls and they were talking to this conservation officer and they just made him sound like such an idiot. And it just came across as very rude. Like he like, he explained, he's like, oh yeah, I'm new here. Like I'm like, I don't really know all these random questions you're asking me, like how many kilogallons of water flow through per two days? Like, I'm sorry, I don't know that. He, they were like asking him very technical questions that honestly, like I have no, like no context where it's like, I don't know how many gallons, like I wouldn't know what, f how many gallons flow through, 
flow through my tap a day like I like random questions that you don't really need to know the answer to like I mean you do it's very important but so they were asking him all these like questions he's like I don't know I'm new here like and then they put it off as a way like oh well I did a google search and oh this guy doesn't really know what he's talking about so they just play him off as like very stupid and it's like bro like if you're just gonna, like I could google this into I could google all the information in this entire show it's not you know what I mean like it's like why would you first of all why would you why would you get someone who's you know, been there a while, who's a conservation officer who's, like, extremely knowledgeable on it for your show, first of all, and why are you making fun of this guy? Like, just, I, I know you guys have no chemistry, Zach and Darren have no chemistry, and you guys are not funny, and you cannot tell a joke to save your life, but don't take it out on some guy who's just doing his job. Like, disconnect. What is going on? Um, he also mentioned the conservation officer said something like, oh yeah, there was a woman here who, um, with her father, like, essentially save the falls and they worked years and years to conserve it um where is she where is she zach where what you can contact her you can get her name you can show a picture who is she don't be shy say her name say her name zach say her name who is this woman who did all this work with her father to conserve the waterfalls what you're not gonna like mention at all how cool that is and how much work that probably took to do that and how many years of conservation work that took to save the waterfalls fine whatever oh yeah so then the last thing it ends with like this beautiful pano of Zac Efron standing on a dock looking out the Icelandic sea and it says something like all we need to do is take from Iceland's example be more sustainable we all just need to lean in to stop climate change and live through a more sustainable world great Zach beautiful montage first of all they did nothing to discuss how like like Iceland is amazing and they're obviously doing amazing things however it's not directly translatable to like everywhere else in the world because they live on top of a volcanic tectonic plates they have energy coming from geothermal sources which a lot of places don't have so they did nothing to like talk about how oh yeah this is amazing and the way they did this was through you know their political structure through campaigning through you know teaching educating all the residents about how important renewable energy was it's because of the local people how they thought it was important they did nothing to like talk about that and how it could translate into North America or other places in the world and then it was just like in his speech it was like oh we all just need to lean in and work together like Zach you live in a four million dollar mansion in LA you're wearing the entire Gucci collection of plaid on your little escapade around Iceland like I'm sorry that I don't think we all just need to lean in and try harder to be more sustainable there are like some like some essential things we need to work through before that's going to happen and it's just tone deaf just so tone deaf and like i i realize this is negative i realize i'm being extremely critical on this sure it's a lovely documentary but it's not doing enough it's not doing enough and why would you spend all those resources going to communities looking up local you know looking up all these things why would you bother if you're not gonna try to make a difference and just give some blasé fair sentence about like oh we all just need to work together for climate change like yes thank you are you stuck in 2008 are you still making your first transition from a plastic water bottle to a reusable like no like we need to do more we have 10 years left what is going on i'm sorry if i put a damper on your washing experience um I am sorry, I didn't mean to like ruin it for anyone. Um, this was just kind of my thoughts as to what was going on with this show. And this is actually what I was thinking when I was watching it. Um, I only watched it once because I do not have time for that. Um, the mental health, I'm too busy sleeping through my depression to watch it a second time. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you have a really good day um, and a really good week. And I hope you're staying safe and I hope your family's safe. And okay, bye.